Hi everyone, Dorota Palska International Neo Artist and Educator here and today we are going to do a beautiful design with the chrome pigments and one stroke. You can have a wee preview of it in here. Absolutely stunning flowers which go with this chrome and I hope you really enjoy watching this tutorial. If you do, hit the share button so the other can see it as well. Let's start! I've got the tips prepared. If you would prefer to sculpt the set, check my previous video. I will give you the card as well, like how to sculpt the nails. And I've got uh, here the pinky, the index finger, middle and the ring finger. We are going to apply the 183, which is a black ink and black gel polish shows the chrome's best. That's why I choose this color. So just apply this color in and then we are going to wrap in the chrome pigment and paint beautiful design on top of it much excited for this set and I hope guys you are going to really like it, the end results. So cut those free edge and then once it's ready give it a cure. We are going to do exactly the same on the next new. And especially for the chromes, one coat is enough of this black. I actually do it one coat in the salon as well for the clients. For a chrome application, you want to have a really nice and clean gel polish and clean top coat. And then the ring finger. When working with the black, remember to don't apply it too thick uh, because the black, red and white, that's the very highly pigmented gels and they always uh, need a really nice, not too thick layer in order to cure properly. So if your gel polish is wrinkled, that's mean you have applied it too thick. Don't do that, especially for the black, red and white. and then give it a cure so i can put that on the side and that was 183 we are going to apply next a high shine no wipe top gel in order to apply the chrome pigment over our design and the chrome pigment i'm going to use is a one from the born pretty it has some holographic shifts to it and i think it will look fab for this design So just apply those high shine no wipe top gel I'm also guys like reading all your comments and I will be trying to answering all the questions in the videos as well because I think this way is much much better so thank you so much for all those questions coming up <laughs> And we've got another one. Check also how the light is reflecting into your top coat. Got a bits and pieces of the dust in there, get rid of them. Fab and then cook it. you can use a different type of chrome for it as well and um, I will also remember guys like all the links to the products I have used are in the descriptions of the each video so depending what product I'm using I'm, they are just in the description but in general I think chameleon pigment is going to be the nicest for this set and uh, we are going to paint the flowers as well I'm actually 
really looking forward to this part because this is the most interesting part of this design oh one more perfect awesome so i need to just finish curing the top coat for the chrome to add a really nice And the first tip is ready. So I have just picked up a chrome and now we are going to apply it into the top coat. And chrome always looks its best on black. And you can see we've got those uh, particles of the chrome. I don't like those kind of like look. Uh, so I'm always taking the finger and I remove any excess of it. That's why I like to apply the chrome with the finger. Because then we have really nice and clean look to the chrome. Okay, so I applied it really well. I love all these colors shifting through it. So first of all, it is like a green, yellow and pink. And on top of that is holographic. So depends which way you look, you will see different results. Absolutely fantastic. And then scratch the free edge always for a chromes. You need to scratch the free edge. If you do scratch the free edge, then it is going to last really nice and long time because the top coat um, likes any kind of gels actually likes either rough or a sticky surface. So apply the stop coat and then give it a cure. The next tip is ready as well. So quickly apply this chrome. remove any excess and then apply the top coat and give it a cure do it the same on the other two nails and I want them all to be chrome I think it will look the nicest. So really wrap this chrome properly in. And same on this one. I'm really addicted to the rooms. It looks like like as a, one of my favorite things to do on the nails, because uh, it looks fantastic, and you've got so many different possibilities playing with rooms, so many different ideas for the designs. And now we are going to incorporate it with the one stroke. So, two of my favorite things together. Apply the top coat. it and cure it as well okay now is the time for a fun so I'm just going to quickly wipe away all this home and on the mixing plate I'm going to apply the colors I'm needing for the next part. So this is going to be white and that is called Snow White. They are acrylic paints and they are water-based paints. They are absolutely fantastic for one stroke. Magenta, which is number 13. And I love painting with the magenta, like it has just a perfect color. Uh, 14, which is pink. And uh, just in case if some of you got those paints, it's the first time you're using. So you twist the tap and then it's open and then you can squeeze the paint. So you close, you open, close, open, 
don't cut it because uh, I had some questions like this as well and then you just squeeze out the paint clean it so I always clean it like this and then this way I also close it as well so the top is clean perfect now we've got some index finger we've got middle finger and on the middle finger we are going to do the design so I'm taking the buffer now I cannot paint with the acrylic paints on top of the shiny surface it needs the rough surface so I'm just giving a scratches to the top coat so my chrome will go matte for the time of painting and you always paint on the matte surface for the um, acrylic paints and I had questions like can you not do it with the gel um, Yes, you can do one stroke with the gel, but I think it's more time consuming and uh, because you have to cure each layer. So if you are painting like on very easy flowers, then it is not a big deal um, because uh, you will just paint it what you have to paint and then cure it. But if you're painting the flowers which has multiple layers, uh, imagine doing like two, three petals and then cure each time, I think it would be time consuming unless you swap the client's hands so yeah then it would be good as well uh, definitely I prefer the acrylic paints for a one stroke and then this is our pinky so let's do this design I want the flowers to kind of join in a little bit together and we are going to use the demaster brush so it's a really nice and thin brush for the one stroke just going to grab some water in first. Then I need some baby wipe in here as well. So each time when I pick up the water, I need to remove the excess of it. You don't want too much water with your paints. Let's put those tip away. And now we are going to start mixing uh, the paints. It is going to be white on the one side of the brush and then the magenta on the other side of the brush. Mix those two colors well. And then when you have the gradient, you can pick up the paint again just so your brush loads the paint like you need the paint on your brush and now we can start painting so I'm going to paint some flowers Just pick up more paint, touch, touch, going to the top. And we've got the first petal ready. And we've got the second petal ready. I want one on the top, so touch, touch, touch. And the one on the bottom. Don't shake your hands too much. One stroke really doesn't like too much of the hand shaking. It only looks like we are shaking with the hand. I'm just going over the design to make the petals really stands out. I don't need much of the paint for this part because they already have got some paint. So it's only a little touches. I didn't clean my brush even once yet. I actually quite like it when I've got some paint on my brush because uh, then it gives me a nicer petals. You have to wait for the first layer to dry and now we are going to paint the second layer of the petals in between the previous ones. So the slower you go the more paint you are going to leave.
Okay, and I have painted another petal. Then another one going to the top and going to the bottom. I'm just going to touch up this petal. Look, I'm also changing the shape of it. But if you touch the petal too soon when it's not dry, you are going to make a mess of it. So don't do it. Like, always wait for it to dry. And then I'm going to paint a very small one just in here. So clean my brush now. Pick up the paint for the leaves. So first of all, I'm going to load my brush with this color. And now I can start painting the leaves. Don't overdo it with the leaves. So it's a touch going to the top, going to the top. Touch, change the angle of the brush, bring it down. And this way we've got one leaf. We've got second leaf. I want a tiny one in here. Touch, touch, touch. Straight brush, change the angle, touch, touch, touch. So when we're painting with the one stroke, we can either lie the brush or we can paint it only in a straight position. So you could like lie your brush or paint straight. And depending what size you want to do. So now I'm halfway through, like a little bit lying and a little bit um, straight position. If I want sharp, I would go straight. And then if I want larger parts, I would line my brush a little bit more. To be honest, that's almost enough for this one. Pick up the D-liner brush. Lots of water in. So lots of water in my white. And always, if you're painting fine detail, you have to have lots of water in. And let's do a couple of the veins. You can also outline the design, but never more than, I would say, up to maybe 30%. If you outline too much, then it looks pretty fake. Look at the shape of the leaf. So when we're outlining, we also change the things a little bit. And with the liner brush, look what a small lines I can create. Now, also, I had the question, like when painting one stroke, how would you paint it on the client? Uh, you can twist the client hand exactly the same way, like you twist the tip. And they are videos of me doing one stroke on the clients as well. This isn't really a problem, like to swap the hands. Like, so normally you hold the client hand this way. Sorry, cameraman. <laughs> Normally you hold the client hand this way, so I'm just say painting like that was one of the questions as well. And I would paint, 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 paint. But you can easily put the client hand this way. You could go like this way. You could go this way. You could go this way. So you can really go and change. Like I have often painted like this way on the client's nails as well, and that's mean you can basically um, work the same with your client like you would do it on the tips it will be just a little bit more time consuming because the tip you just twist like this and the client hands you have to turn it but absolutely possible to do it okay so when painting such a small detail like i've got very little paint on my brush um, i don't want too much paint very small amount of it and it's just quicker for me to twist the tip rather than Hold it in the same position. Okay. 
so a bit of low outline in here and then just a couple of dots I'm not going to use my good brush for it I will grab some old brush and I always suggest like you never use your good brush look how this one is bended and that's from doing the dots so a couple of the dots let's paint some fine lines as well I love it with the one stroke I think it always looks fantastic so just a couple And again, for those fine lines, I've got hardly any water on my brush. Uh, I've got any, <laughs> hardly any paint on my brush. Lots of water in. And those lines, I want them to be hardly visible. Now a couple of the dots. very thin thin dots okay and this way we have finished painting this flower the other flower is going to be more into your way guys because i will paint on this side hi shine no wipe top gel again and we are going to top coat it and then the chrome is going to pop out and so does the flower design absolutely beautiful and if you don't know how to do it one stroke you need to learn how to do it and it's not easy like to start with i have had so many fails um, before i learned how to paint the one stroke uh, but the main problem for me was i was shaking the hand too much so just stop shaking your hands until you will get there so the other flower i want to paint it in here pick up the same colors So you will be able to see it from a different angle, the same painting. I mean, it's never the same because it's a free hand, so. But touch, touch, and I'm lying my brush, kind of dragging the paint. Touch, 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 and keep massaging those paints. So we've got first petal. I don't feel my paint well today, and the reason for it is I have changed the baby wipes, and they are a bit more moisturized, so I can feel it. Um, my paint to be a little bit too oily and some paints are very oily I don't like this feel I want to feel those uh, paints to be um, like acrylic paints more stiffer than too oily too slidey too slidey paints aren't good for a one stroke I'm not going to use this wipe. <laughs> and I show you this guys now the difference. mix my paint well and now go over this design So 
so the first one first first row of the petals is ready and now we are going to paint the petals and you can see it we've got three petals so i want to paint in between those petals Touch, 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 grab the paint, go to the top. Now I'm going to start lying my brush a little bit. Do another petal, so leave the gap, touch, touch, go to the top. And another one. And there, we have to wait for this to dry. So this usually gives us a time to pick up a fresh paint. And if you need it, touch up some petals. So I'm just going to gently touch them up. And I think it depends what kind of level we are painting. If we're painting like on level one, I usually go one coat. If I'm painting level two, which is more advanced, then I would go two coat. Tiny petal. Another thing what I can tell you guys, but I show it on the mixing palette, when you're painting the petals, don't go like this, because then you can see it, what shape of petals you will get. So don't twist it. You have to start straight, go to the top and finish straight. So this way you get a better shape of the petals. So like this. So starting with my brush, straight, touch, line the brush, go to the top, and then straighter brush and finish on a straight brush, like don't wiggle with your hand. That's another very common mistake, like with the one stroke, which I used to do it as well. I think it is also, um, when I'm recording the tutorials, I'm trying to tell you all mistakes I have done and how to fix them. Because if you know how to fix the mistakes, then it is easier for you to, to start doing a nicer news. If you don't know what are the mistakes, then you are not able to fix them and you kind of go and repeat them. When you're working with the one stroke brush, it's good to sometimes squeeze it as well. So it has a really nice and sharp um, sharp surface when the hairs are nice and all together okay so leaf straight brush i have only done the line touch touch kind of like uh, moving the paint a little bit straight brush again where white touch the white and green touch the green i have changed the angle of my brush and touch touch this is how you would paint the leaves Okay, so doing exactly the same. And actually, the, um, once you get hang of it, you will make um, nicer shapes as well, and it will take you much quicker time. So not too much. Clean the brush. If you leave the acrylic paint for too long time on your brush, what you could do is you could use a um, monomer, acrylic monomer, to clean your brush. It wouldn't be as harsh on your brush as it is the um, acetone. You can also use a hot water to clean it as well. Look how I'm rolling my brush as well. So my uh, D-liner brush is constantly having like a really nice point 
the way because the way I um, pick up the paint. Very small amount. Those tiny wee lines. I've got the paint in the wrong part of my brush, so I have just cleaned it and now just painting with the tip. And when you're painting with your brush, don't press too hard, you don't want to break the tip of your brush. That is enough, I don't want to outline too much. Take the old brush and do a couple of the dots. And those dots really nicely finish the design. My ladies, honestly, they love so much like when I'm painting the one stroke and uh, yeah you have to learn it how to do it as well so i'm sure if you paint like a hundred flowers you will get there and it's fun because each time you can create different different shape of the flowers different petals and it will look completely different and honestly once you get a hang of it it's much quicker Mine takes pretty long time as well when I'm trying to explain the things like going slower with the brush because if I wouldn't go slow with the brush it looks like we are shaking the hand. So if I would paint quick it will look like I'm shaking the hand where I'm not shaking the hand. And this is really misleading um, when people watching tutorials on the YouTube uh, or even online uh, that's it needs to be mentioned that uh, this is not like as it looks on the videos. So this is a middle finger. I need to show you the final look because it will look awesome together. So come on, behave. Oh, it doesn't. I need a bit more of the blue tack. There we are. Then this is the index finger. I actually can't wait to take a picture of this set because I think it looks amazing and this color of the chrome goes together as well and the last one just in here so they really nicely join in together and that's what we have created so i show you at all different angles of the light as well so you can see it because I think it is uh, important how the light reflect on it as well. So not over the top. Really nice set. Yeah, go be Terry Hacks, guys. Bye for now.